Nahum chapter 2. And we're looking at the destruction foretold of Nineveh. And we need to look at this because Nineveh was a wicked city. God sent a preacher, they repented. They had a national revival. Then they went back to their sins and God clobbered them. If God doesn't judge America, He's going to have to bring all these Ninevites back up and personally apologize to them. And God's not going to do that. God's going to call the Ninevites from Jonah's time to judge the Ninevites that are in this time. But hey, listen, you know, God sent us one preacher. I think it was like five, six words. And we all repented. What's your problem? He that dashes in pieces is come up before thy face. Destruction. Keep the munition. That's what America's crying right now to the Christians. Go oh, keep my guns, keep my guns. What if God turns your guns against you? Because men put trust in things. We're supposed to put our trust in God. Watch the way. Keep a lookout. Make thy loins as the strongest part of your body strong. Fortify thy power mightily. Be prepared. But you're going to be conquered. For the Lord has turned away the excellency of Jacob as the excellency of Israel. For the emptiers have emptied them out. These people go in there and they cleared it all completely out. And marred their vine branches. When you remove the bark off the vines, you just, you killed the, the vines. You accepted it to diseases. And mildew and mold. But we know Israel will be strong. We know they're God's people. The shield of the mighty men is made red. The valiant men are scarlet. And the description is, is this during or after the war? Red being blood. Or is this a preparation by the Ninevites of dying and painting themselves? I mean, our military spends a fortune on the paint of camouflage and our troops and our equipment. The Native Americans would go at the war paint. I'm not sure what the case is, before or after. The chariot shall be flaming torches in the day of his preparation. You're going to be quick. And the fir tree shall tremble, shall be terribly shaken. And if it's the chariots of the time, I mean, you had a horse or more than one horse. These chariots, some of them describe as chariots of iron. There were many of them. The chariot shall rage in the streets. 
So in the streets of Nineveh, it's going to be full of chariots. Today we would say the, the jeeps, tanks. They shall jostle one against another in a broad way. The battle, fighting. They shall seem like torches. Quick. They shall run like lightning. That verse also describes your automo automobile racing today. And if you ever seen those pictures, night pictures, on a highway, on a road with the, with the lights of streaking, of white and red, it's one big long line. That's the speed of the car. It's how the camera catches. I mean, torches, I would assume that when it's dark, they would have torches on the on the chariots, and if they're going full speed, you, you would see that flame of fire behind them. The trail of fire, the trail of smoke. He shall recount his worthiness. Everything that he has for battle. They shall stumble in their walk. That's the next thing to fall in. They shall make haste to the wall thereof. Protection. And the defense shall be prepared. Defense is here. Here comes the, the evading army. You, you are not on an attack of defense. You're on a protection. You are defending. The gates of the river shall be opened. And the power shall be dissolved. Taken down, destroyed. And husband shall be led away captive. That's what you do when when you win a military campaign. You take the people captive. Seen that throughout the Bible. She shall be brought up. And her maid shall lead her as with the voice of dove. Quiet. Lonely, tambourine upon their breasts, and you you seen the the, the tambourines, the temples. But Nineveh is of old like a pool of water, yet they shall flee away. Cities surrounded himself by water. That was water is the mainstay of man's life. You're not going to find a city in the middle of a desert if there's no well, if there's no water, whether natural or man made. Stand, stand, shall they cry, but none shall look back. They're running like Lot and his family and his wife turned back. Let me get one more glance of Sodom. They're not going to do that with Nineveh. They're too busy running. Take you the spoil of silver. Go in there and, and take all the silver. And take the spoil. Go, go in there and what's ever left Whatever they didn't take. You know, I would not think, especially with the attitude of Lot, that the angels had to grab him and force him out. I don't think that Lot would have had any luxury carrying. If he did, he had only what he could put on himself. I'm not sure about the door. 
Maybe his wife held some things. But see, the thing is, the invading armies come. You're on the run. Because you don't want to be taken captive. Your China ain't going to do you no good. Your gold ain't going to... You're talking about a fierce people. They're cruel. They'll take your gold, they'll take your silver, then they'll torture you. For there is none, there is no end of the store and the glory of all the pleasant furniture. Nineveh's is full of it. Nineveh's like America. If we were to be taken by an enemy in the next few months, and we run away, we are driven away, we are taken captive, you imagine when they came into our what all the great things they would find. That's an end of them. Even the poorest people of America, they got a cell phone. They are saying right now, and it gets me angry. With our taxes. Well no, we gotta feed these children, we gotta feed these children, we gotta give them free lunches. All right, my question is, is not to give them free lunches. Do the parents have tattoos? Do they smoke cigarettes? Are they involved in alcohol? Do they do drugs? Are they wasting their money on scratch-off tickets? Do they have these expensive phones that cost over $1,000? Well, the, the, the children don't need a free lunch. The parents need to stop wasting their money. I don't think when Katrina came and hit New Orleans, I really don't think that your Pokemon cards really did you any good. That brand new living room set. That big fancy car that you couldn't, you didn't have time to drive out. When the stock market fell in America and we went to the Depression, all that money you had, gone. Didn't do you no good, your stocks. And there's another Depression coming in America. She's empty. Void and waste. Like Sodom and Gomorrah. Like Babylon today. How do you know the judgment of God? Look at what happens. Look at Jeremiah's description of Jerusalem in the book of Lamentations. And don't get imagine what, what's going to do to America. America is going to fall. And I just wonder, will America fall? Now, it, it's, it, it's a thing right now. Which is going to come first, the rapture or the fall of America? The heart melted. Anxiety, fears, troubles, broken hearts, death, a loss, no food. The knees smite together like belt sizer and sitting there at that party and there's a hand writing on the wall. Uncontrollable shaking. Much pain is in all the loins. I thought we were told to strengthen your loins. And the faces of them all gathered blackness. Dirt. Anxiety, fears, troubles, diseases. 
Where is the dwelling of the lion? Now, this is interesting that the fact is the kings of Assyria described themselves, and I, I told you earlier, they portrayed on, on their portraits and walls and paintings and all that. They were this fierce army. And they even drew the pictures of torturing the people they conquered. In the many vile and cruel ways of torture. They drew pictures of it. They described themselves as lions. Crushing their enemies. This is not like your ball team. Oh, we're the lion. We're the bear. We're the saber tooth tie. Whatever it is. These are fierce men who are trained from their childhood. Like Japan and China. The children are raised in Korea. They're raised to be warriors and fighters and no mercy. The Muslims in there. You don't want that. You don't want, want them. They'll probably be the ones that God says, all right, go in America and clean up. It's not going to be the Canadians that are going to attack us. It's not going to be the Mexicans. They're not fierce. Or it could be that God's going to let the population of America dwindle down to nothing because Sodomites don't make a population. Sodomites don't naturally have children. They adopt them and they... And they, they get the courts to give them children. They don't naturally have children from from two of their affairs, and I don't want to say marriage because there's, there, there's no marriage there. We don't are not going to get a population grow when we are murdering the babies in the womb. Maybe what will destroy America is one day we'll wake up and they'll do the census and there's nobody here no more. Or we're very much lacking. Maybe we'll have a, a lack of food, a lack of money, and a lack of people. Then the enemy will come in. But here's people, they describe themselves as lions, and lions are fierce. If you ever get time, and I don't remember the book, what the book I read was, you, you can find good information. Is with these lions, is you could be in a tent in the area where lions are, male or female, it doesn't matter, and you both go to sleep. You wake up in the morning, you're like, okay, Joe, let's. Joe? Joe? Well, maybe he's out there, got the fire. Maybe he went off to get go potty, whatever. No, Joe has been grabbed by a lion in the middle of the night, taken off, and you didn't even know it. You'll find the remains of Joe. That prophet that said a lion will meet you, and he'll kill you, but he'll he'll spare your ass. That's not what a lion does. He doesn't kill a prey just to kill. He does it, and we'll see it in the moment. Does it for, hey, that's dinner. He'll hunt you down. And you don't even know he's there. And when you realize he's there, there's a whole herd of them, or whatever you call it. And this is what you got Assyria as lions crushing their enemies. Now, a Shuprapa, well-known man of, the, of these, he would portray himself literally killing lions single-handedly with a weapon or even barehanded. He drew it. I can kill this lion all by myself. 
Is it true? I don't know. Could be. We know Samson did it. We know David did it. And what's odd here is, okay, we're, we're the fierce lions, all right? Now think about America. We're, we're the fierce nation of all nations. God is going to use what we're going to read. Is he's going to reverse what they think they are. And kind of like God saying, <laughs> uh, look who you think you are. And where is Nineveh today? Please show me one Ninevite. You can't. You mean these mighty lions? The lion? Where is the dwelling of the lions? And the feeding place of the young lions? You know, where did it live? Where did they feed? Where the lion, even the old lion, what's America do with her old people? Stick them in the, in the nursing home. Now listen, my grandma got to the point she was bald, and they were always calling 911 to help pick her up. She had to go into a facility for her own safety. There are people with these Alzheimer's, and they're dangerous by themselves. I mean, when you, you got to go to work or, you know, you got to go to the grocery store. And even if you took your loved one, that moment you turn away, the, the, the worst of the child, they go off somewhere else. Sometimes, you know, you got to put them in a the facility for their protection. I'm not talking about those. I'm talking about, all right, you know, like abortion. Grandma and grandpa's just getting in my way of my life and all that. Stick them somewhere else and let us go to, you know, Venture Park or go see a rat. Let's go have fun. Let's go live our life. The baby, the, the abortion, or the grandparent, they're a burden. Let's get rid of them. That's what I'm trying to say. Evidently, God's telling us the Ninevites took care of their young. They took care of their old. Even though the old lion walked. And the lion's whelp, that's a, that's a very young lion. None made them afraid. <laughs> Again, this, this picture, Nineveh was without fear. Except when the prophet Jonah came. And they feared God. America has no fear. Including her Christian saved churches. They love their sin. They boast of themselves, Revelation 3. The lion did tear in pieces enough for his wealth. So what the lion did is, what he does, is he'll go out there and find the weakest zebra or whatever. And they'll go after the weaker one. And they'll tear that animal down, okay? Oh, he's got a little bunch of cubs. They'll tear off the meat of that animal. Enough for the little animal, the little cubs to eat. Frank, we got people today in America who let the public school system feed them. I don't want this baby. I don't want this prey. It's going to ruin my life. I go in there and butcher it out, please. Let's just tell the truth. 
I'll sleep with anybody and everyone to get pregnant so the government will give me more money by the church and just let, let the school system, let them go do what they want to do. Friend, we are worse than Nineveh. Now they may have brought their children up as savages, warlike, cruel, but I don't think in Nineveh they would have children go in there and kill their schoolyard children. If they had school, but they had some kind of thing. I don't think they went in there and they had theaters and stuff like that. I don't think the kids went in there and, and, and young adults go in there and pop, 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 kid, and well, they have to use a sword. Like Americans do today. And you can't say, and I hate to say this, but don't get me wrong, you can't say it, it's the video game. Because you realize what the, what the Syrians, the Koreans, the, the Chinese and the Japanese and the Orient and, and the Islam and these fierce nations. Do you realize what combat skills they put their children through to learn? I mean, have you ever just gone to a YouTube video and type in Korean military march? I know they got a couple, they, they got funny ones, you know, they're, they're doing it to, you know, uh, John Travolta's dancing, whatever it is. I'm, I'm just talking about, they got these huge missiles. And they got these these rows and rows and rows of, of military men and women marching. They don't make fun of their leader like we do in our country. And you look at the women, they're like, man, you don't mess with that woman. Them, most of those women, they're not brought up to take care of children. They're brought up to kill you. I've heard disgusting, cruel stories from soldiers in Vietnam. How the women of the Allies and the, and the enemy were brought up knowing that the troops were for sexual favors. And how they would destroy our men, our soldiers, through sexual pleasures. And I've heard some weird, cruel stories from soldiers themselves that would have no, they may add a little thing, but they, they wouldn't lie about it. The lion did tear in pieces enough for his wealth. A family today don't even sit down together at the table. And strangled for his lionesses. He's taking care of the, the, the children's lions, and he's taking care of his lioness. He doesn't take down a wildebeest. This is mine. All oh, mine. No, it's for the whole flock, herd, whatever you call them, pride, I think it's called. I'm not sure what it's called. And filled his holes with prey. He's even brought some home, some groceries <laughs> for later. We got women in America today, grown up, married, and they don't even know how to cook. And they're in a Baptist church. I know, I've heard plenty of women in, 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 in churches I've been in. I don't know how to cook. We go to the store and we, we get the rotisserie chicken. And we go to the store, we get this. We go. You don't even know how to operate a crock pot? You got these cell phones and you got these smartphones. You can't. All right, uh, let's see. I want to roast with a uh, crock pot. Okay, water, roast. Potato. They can't even do that. But they'll hand you the phone. 
Did you see this on Focus on the Family? Did you did you read this story about this guy went to heaven? He died and went to heaven, and he's telling us all that. I'm sitting there like, you don't know nothing. I make these little moon emblems. Oh my God. This church is dead. The fierceness of the Ninevites took care of their family. I forget which king it was, but, but uh, Caesarea. Yeah, I think it's Caesarea. The one where Jael took the nail and put it through his, his, his skull. You know what his mother was saying? He's out in the back. Oh, where's my son? Oh, my wealthy son. Where's my son? And, the, and her mistresses, her her slaves and her companions say, well, you know what they're doing is they're spoiling, they're getting gold, they're getting silver. They say, hey, you know what? Fred, that will look good on your wife. Really? Hey, okay. Didn't your little boy want a sailboat? Yeah. Hey, look, at here, here's a sailboat. Why don't you give that to your little boy? Is that what they were like? God tells us the Ninevites, these lions, they took care of their family. There's the wife and there's the children. There are men out there, they don't even know who their sons are, and the sons and the children don't even know who their father is, and they're out there, they're, 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 they're getting chicken, they're getting the uh, potato fry, they're getting all that, and nothing ever goes home to mom and the children. They don't even know where mom and the children are. You know how fierce these people are? Have you ever seen real pictures of lions? Have you ever seen a picture of a lion after a kill? His face ain't pretty. It's covered with... Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Alright, right. come back to verse number... There it is. Verse 3. The shields of the mighty men are made red, and the valiant men are scarlet. That's the picture of a lion after he makes a kill. He's going to have flies buzzing around him. The, the king of the beasts is going to have flies buzzing because he knows the dead meat, the dead blood. Unless he go wash his face, and I assume he will go wash his face. I wonder what Mama Lion does. Her cub's got his face all covered with blood. Oh, she's going to do? She just licks his face clean. If you have more than one cat, ever see one cat washing another cat? Fills his holes with prey, food, he brings home food. And his dens with ravin. And ravin is eagerness, devour with eagerness. When that lion takes down a water buffalo or deer, whatever he's got, a good new, he's happy with the meal. And what we read in verses 11 and 12 is the reversal that God's going to do to Nineveh, the enemy being the lions. Behold, I am against thee, Nineveh, saith the Lord of hosts. You think you're in lions? Well, Wait till I send the, net, the, the enemy into you. Babylon destroyed Nineveh in 612 BC. Do you know what one of the symbols of Babylon was? It was a lion.
Do you know what they had in Babylon that was used as a torture device? Ask Daniel. A lion. Did you get that? Oh, you don't read the Old Testament. Yo, know, I'm against thee, saith the Lord of hosts. I will burn her chariots in the smoke. So here's this big smoke cloud, and in that smoke is the chariots burning. The sword shall devour the young lions, the, you know, the Ninevites. Do you realize the young people in America today are being destroyed by a scalpel before they're even born? Do you realize kids in America today are being killed by guns and bullets? I will cut off the prey from the earth. No more food. Have you looked at your grocery stores? Have you, do you remember what, what, what Jeremiah said about Jerusalem before and after? Do you remember Ahab? I think it was Ahab. He's sitting there. He's walking up on, on, on the walls of the city. And these two women cry out to him. And they say, oh, king, what? What's your problem? Oh, we boiled my son yesterday. We ate my son. We we're going to eat her son. But she hid her son. And we don't have enough money to buy dumb crap or dung. We don't have enough money to go to the butcher and get the head of an ass. That Jeremiah tells us in Lamentations he's watching women eat their children. Now let me ask you a question. With the, with the due regard that Americans have for their children today, and it comes to the point that there is no food in America, if we will abort those children, what do you think the mothers are going to do if they get hungry enough to eat their children? And not even blink an eye. No, 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 don't tell me no, they want it. Which prophet is it? Is it Ezekiel said? The, the, the women that tinkle with their feet. You know, the high class women are grabbing the children that come out between their legs and eat them. The high class women. Oh, you don't read the Old Testament. That if this stuff begins to happen, you're going to be shocked. And the last thing, your church doors will be called the love of God and the, and the lilies of God and all around you, chaos. And you don't have an idea what's going on but the Bible believer. And the Bible believer sitting there with prayer for God saying, God, this is in your word. You're going to have to take care of me like you took care of Jeremiah, like you took care of Ezekiel, like you took care of the other prophets. And when the police are called for preaching the word, hey, that's Jeremiah. Hey, that was Paul. When the Christians come up, they don't have to be doing that. You're turning people away. How you doing, Pharisee? How you doing, Israel? What are you talking about? Yeah, you don't read your Bible. The sword shall devour a young lion. That's the Ninevite children. America wouldn't say lions, they would say eaglets. An eagle is an unclean animal. A lion in the Bible is either the devil or it's Jesus. And I will cut off thy prey from the earth. No more food. 
and the voice of thy messengers shall no more be heard. Now, what I always say, don't mess with the words, right? Don't change the words. Every once in a while, I got a tablet over here. We're recording on the tablet. Somebody will, I will get a message. Somebody's trying to text me. Somebody's trying to give me electronic information. Now watch the messenger. I've got to go into my tablet. I've got to tap in messenger. And I've got to download it to get someone's text. When? Nehem, I mean, I'm not going to get this guy's name. Nahum prophesies against Assyria. I can't read. 663 BC. So take 663 plus 2000. 2600 years later, if you don't mess with your Bible, We have Messenger on our computers. And God says one day that Messenger is not going to work no more. So when it comes to pass, if the raptures happen or not, or we're in heaven or not, yeah. When your cell phone services come to a complete end, you can't fix it. If, we're, if we haven't been raptured yet, guess what the Bible says? And we're in heaven in heaven. God, you said it. Now, how's that? I think a couple weeks ago, I was sitting on the sidewalk, holding a sign, a couple weeks, I believe it was. A guy came up and started talking to me. And he said, I don't read the Old Testament. But I like Paul. I started quoting things from him. There. And he was astonished to realize, well, yeah, wait a minute. Yeah, Paul quoted the Old Testament. Churches are not doing their job. We got too much about fluff 